everyone. My sincere apologies for the long delay in posting the second of the Human Form series of videos. You have to remember, I'm working entirely alone. I don't have an editor. I'm the editor. I don't have a script writer. I'm the script writer. I don't have a photographer or a videographer. I'm the photographer and the videographer. I don't have a graphics artist. I'm the graphics artist. These videos take time to make. And when the other duties of running my modest enterprise need doing, well, making videos has to wait. I do hope you understand, and I thank you for your patience. Today's video is the second in the Human Form series. If you have not seen the first video in the series, Part 1, Theory, you should stop this video now and watch it first. This video will cover the torso, both male and female. If you watch the first video, you already know that although the male and female torsos are similar, they are different enough to warrant a separate demo for each. So let's get right to it. We will do the female torso first. The first step is to make the underlying shape. As we observed in the first video, the underlying shape of the female torso is sort of like a softly rounded violin with the pelvic area slightly larger than the chest area. The cross section is an ovoid shape, not flat, but not elliptical either, a bit flatter on the back than on the front. There should be a waist separating the chest from the pelvis. When making this shape, I try to avoid using the paddle at first. Human shapes are not flat, they are rounded, so, I alter the contour by using the graphite marver plate on my torch. I rock the heated portion back and forth, flipping it over periodically until I get a shape that has an ovoid cross section. I handle up to the bottom of the pelvis and then prepare to sculpt the abdominal area. I repeat this process for the top of the torso. Finally, I do use my paddle to fine-tune the shape on the front and the back. At this point, you should be able to visualize your torso. If you can't, you are not ready to continue. I handle up to the bottom of the pelvis and then prepare to sculpt the abdominal area. Using a stainless butter knife as a sculpting tool, I create a long indentation in an arc from just below the center of the chest, curving down to the top of the pelvis. I continue this line down to the groin and then repeat it on the other side. This line represents the bottom of the rib cage and the outer boundary of the abdomen. Once both lines are in place, I heat the center and crease a vertical line bisecting the abdomen and onward up through the chest. Then I place a long vertical crease from the neck to the top of the pelvis on the back of the torso. These lines bisect the torso and represent the spine. All of these lines will soften as the sculpting process continues. What is left will be more like contours than lines, which is a more natural look than hard creases. Now I handle up to the top where the neck will attach and begin work on the pelvis. Most torsos in art have at least a portion of the upper legs included, but I don't do that. Instead, I'll create this torso with the intention of adding the legs later. With the initial sculpting of the abdomen complete, I now like to pose the torso. I use a soft flame that will penetrate the glass without melting the surface until the torso is able to be moved. 
Then I twist the torso into an interesting pose, visualizing where the limbs and head will go as I do so. The pose can be modified later, but I have an easier time building the figure with the torso already posed to begin with. The first thing I do is shorten the base of the pelvis. I do this because after I add the legs in a complete figure, when I clean up the two seals between the legs, the upper inside of the thighs tend to flow together. This lengthens the crotch unnaturally. Shortening the pelvis helps to counter this. Once I have the pelvis ready, I envision where the legs will attach. You can think of these attachment areas as matching a panty or bikini line, cut narrow across the front and wide across the back. I call these flattened areas landing pads. They are angled about 25 degrees from the vertical and about 45 degrees from the horizontal, like this. These angles can be varied slightly depending on the intended pose of the legs. You can see how they recall a panty or bikini line. The importance of the landing pads will become evident in the next video where I will complete these figures by adding the legs, arms, and head. The next step is to create the cleavage in the buttocks. Usually, some glass must be added here to have the proper mass before cleaving. I don't add the glass to each half. Instead, I add it all at once in the center at the base of the spine. Then I use the mini torch and gravity to distribute the glass where it needs to be. Sculpting with a small forceful flame like this is a very important skill to learn. Once I have the glass in the butt area distributed properly, I apply a soft, deep heat and use a stainless butter knife to cleave the butt into two halves. Finally, looking down at the butt from the top, I can see that there is an unnatural steepness to the butt near the cleavage. Again, using the mini torch and a sharp, forceful flame, I let gravity reshape each half into a more natural, round shape. The pelvic area is now ready to receive the legs. If I were building a complete figure, I would add them now. But I'm just making a torso today, so I weld on a handle to the bottom of the pelvis and remove the one at the neck. Although I maintain my heat base by using the splash from the flame while preheating the next addition, it's a good idea to restore my heat base at this point in the process. This can be done by placing the torso in the kiln for a few minutes or by reheating it using a soft, rich annealing flame. I prefer to keep a Bunsen burner handy for this purpose. With the pose set and the heat base stable, I can begin work on the upper body. I begin with the shoulders. If you look at a human skeleton, you will see that the arms are attached to the shoulders, not directly to the torso. I add two small lumps to represent the shoulders. Depending on the pose, the shoulders should be positioned according to however the arms are held in the pose. They can be high or low, forward or back. Once I have the shoulders to work with, I add the scapula next. This is the shoulder blade. It is roughly triangular in shape. 
To create the scapula, I use a wiping technique. I heat the tip of a 12 millimeter rod very hot while also heating the area of the upper back to receive the addition until it glows slightly. Then I quickly wipe the addition on, starting from about the center of the back upward toward the shoulder and off the end of the shoulder. I add the other side using the same technique. It will take some practice to get both of these additions to match up in a natural way. Now I add the pectorals. These are done the same way as the scapulas, but are much smaller. The wipes begin much higher on the chest and use a much smaller amount of glass. They terminate over the shoulder in the same way. Notice how the scapula and pectoral wipes create a shallow indentation at the bottom of the shoulders. This will become the armpits. I melt the glass smooth in this region and use my egg tool to create the armpit depressions. Now it is time for the breasts. Female breasts are soft and flexible and shaped by gravity so they are best represented by utilizing gravity to shape them. Breasts are attached to the rib cage at the base of the pectorals, so I make an addition there. I tend to prefer medium to small breasts rather than very large ones. I heat the breast until it shrinks into a round shape and then hold the torso vertically to allow the breast to hang a little. Then I add the other breast using the same technique. Finally, I add the nipples. Ideally, the two nipples in the center of the clavicle should make about a right angle and the nipples should point slightly upward. I do not add tiny bits of glass. Instead, I heat the tip of the breast and quickly touch it lightly with a warm piece of glass, pulling the surface out to a tiny point. This makes a more natural looking nipple. With the breasts complete, it is now time to add the trapezius and neck. I have a special technique I use to add this entire structure all at one time. I heat the top of the torso between the shoulders while preparing a medium sized gather on the end of a 12 millimeter rod. Once the gather is very hot, I touch it to the torso where the neck should be. Then I quickly wipe it side to side, out to but not over the shoulders, ending up back in the middle again. I do this quickly enough so that the glass is still very hot. I draw up vertically slightly and can now visualize the trapezius muscles with the neck at the top. Then I quickly fold the hot rod forward onto the chest down to where the clavicle should be and then draw the entire mass upwards again. If I do it correctly, this move creates the entire area, trapezius and neck, all in a single hot move. Human spines tip forward at the neckline so I want to draw the top of the neck and trapezius mass forward slightly. I wait for the mass to cool a little and then I burn off the excess rod. I heat the top of the neck, allowing it to shrink down into the trapezius and get a little bit thicker. For females, the neck is left relatively long. Then I finish off the neck by flattening the top at a slight downward angle. The last thing to do is to complete the shoulders and add the deltoids.
I add the deltoids by dabbing on some glass at the top of the shoulder, creating a natural transition between the shoulder and the trapezius. Finally, I flatten the tip where the arms would normally be attached. To define the clavicle, I make two creases. These run from the base of each shoulder to the base of the neck on the front side. And that is our female torso. Now let's do the male. The male torso proportions are different from the female. The upper body is much more massive, so the violin shape we use for the female looks more like a gourd or squash. The waist is less prominent and the pelvis a bit shorter in proportion overall. The male torso blank is started the same way as the female, using a rocking motion to flatten the pelvis. Then I gather up some rod for the upper body. I'll just fast forward through this part. I flatten the upper body using that same rocking motion, starting at the top and working my way toward the center of the torso as the glass cools. The abdominal area is much more prominent than on the female, so it will require more definition. I use the same technique to create the abdominal muscles, but crease them a bit more deeply. After adding the vertical crease, bisecting the abdomen, I add two horizontal creases to make the six-pack. Then I crease the spine along the back as I did with the female. I 
I handle up to the top and prepare the pelvis in much the same way as I did with the female. First, I shorten it in preparation for the legs. Then, I press in the landing pads. Because the hips are not as wide, the landing pads will also be a bit smaller. The buttocks are a bit smaller and less round than on the female torso. First, I add the mass, then smooth and redistribute it using the hand torch. Finally, I cleave the mass with a butter knife and soften the crease with the hand torch. The next step is to modify the waist. If I skip this step, my male figures tend to look somewhat feminine because the waist is too narrow. What is missing are the obliques, the muscles that are just above the pelvis on either side of the waist. It is simple enough to add them with just a couple of quick angular swipes of glass. Then paddle down the burn-off nubs and use the hand torch to smooth off the additions. As you can see, this widens the waist so that the torso looks less feminine. Before I switch ends, I need one more minor detail. My friend Mylon Townsend used to refer to this as the scrotal mass, but we don't need detail for this torso. We will get more into it in the next video. Now I handle up to the bottom and restore my heat base. I pose the torso and then begin the sculpting process on the upper body. Everything about the male upper body is massive compared with the female. The shoulders are much larger. The scapula are wider and thicker and start lower on the torso. The pectorals are huge and prominent. As with the female, I begin with the shoulders. These additions are larger than the female, but done the same way.
scapula are very large and wide and create the wide angular shape of the upper torso. I add the scapula by making large swipes from the middle of the back upward over the shoulders. I usually end up paddling and sculpting a bit on these additions since they are so large and difficult to control. pectorals are next. This is perhaps the hardest part of the male figure since they are very large and prominent and constitute the dominant feature of the front upper body. The pecs are added using a large carefully shaped wipe from the center of the chest to the shoulder starting out wide and getting narrower as I leave off the shoulder. Both the top and bottom of this wipe represent surface features. The bottom line of the pecs and the muscle just beneath the clavicle. Now I take the time to refine the pectorals by wiping off excess glass where needed and by paddling and shaping them with a butter knife. As in the female, the addition of the pectoral along with the scapula creates a slight depression beneath the shoulder where the armpit will be. I smooth the armpits and then indent them using a graphite tool. I like to further define the pectorals by heating and creasing the line created at the bottom of the addition. By also lifting up slightly as I make these creases, I add to the apparent mass of the pectorals. With the main torso now complete, I turn my attention to the trapezius and neck. Like the other upper body parts, these are much more massive in the male than in the female. The move is the same as on the female, but a larger gather is required. Again, I swipe back and forth between the shoulders and then draw up the neck before folding it forward toward the clavicle. The neck ends up angled forward in the same way, but is shorter and thicker than the female. I draw the neck up into its final position, shrink it down, and paddle the top flat, angled slightly downward. Now I add the deltoids. They connect to the trapezius and are rounded over the shoulder mass. I add a gather of glass to the top of the shoulder and melt it round. A little fine tuning with the paddle helps them read better. I like to sort of square them off by touching first the top and then the sides. This adds a bit of definition. Finally, I paddle the ends flat where the arms would be.
Then I crease two lines to represent the clavicle. And there you have it, two torsos, one female and one male. I suggest practicing torsos until you really have them down and they read well before continuing to complete the figures. We'll do that in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. Thanks for watching. If you have not already done so, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Much more will be coming soon. See you next time.